All right, so I wanted to start class by talking about Schoology. We've been in Schoology for a couple weeks now. People are learning their way around. So this is going to be your homework. Please make sure you get that written down. But the first thing that we're going to do is talk about Schoology. So Oscar logged in, Ozzy, but you can see up here his real name's Oscar. Now the first thing you might notice is tisk tisk Oscar, you've left your notifications unchecked. Anytime you see anything red on a website, it's normally worth looking at, especially if it has a number associated with it. Oscar has 50 notifications. Now obviously you can't see all 50 right here. So if you go to show all notifications, you can look through a timed list of what happened. So notice when I post the homework, you see that I post things. It doesn't necessarily mean that like I've assigned it to you guys. You just see like when I post, you can see when people do their independent reading logs, you can see that Mrs. Cullinan posted a Quizlet. Like you can follow everything that we've done on Schoology. You can see when people reply to things. So these notifications are worth checking because some of it might involve things that you've done. Like once we get into our discussion boards. So these notifications are worth checking. But I want you guys to tell me the parts of Schoology that I should look at or that you should be aware of. So if we go back to Ozzy's homepage, anytime you want to go back home, you can just click on your Phoenix Middle School up at the top. Right, or you can click home. But I like clicking on Phoenix. You can see here, you can follow. This is kind of like your wall of what's been going on in the classes that you are in. So by timeline, you can always see when things get posted. So Mrs. Cullen with a video from the house and stuff. What, what should I like? How do people get to their homework? There's three ways that you can get to your homework, actually. So let's talk about tonight's homework, 6-4. Elena, how would you get to it? So the easiest way is right over here. You can see upcoming assignments and you can click on calendar, which is also a tab over on the left hand side and see everything that's happening on your calendar. So when things are due um, for all of your classes at the same time. Now, some of these like bigger assignments, I don't necessarily know why this is stretched over the whole. Um, all right. I, yeah. I'm not certain, but apparently it goes until June 30th of next year. So, but then there's other things like A76.1. You can see this is due by midnight on Wednesday. So realize that my due dates are all when, like midnights. So when it says due on Wednesday, that means you got to get it done by the end of the day on Wednesday. So we saw that there was that t the column on the right hand side. But Elena said that also I can go to courses and go to accelerated seven. And then how do I find 6-4, Anish? Materials, I can either click on materials or notice the drop down arrow. I can jump right to one of the folders. So if I wanna jump right to the folder that has chapter six in it, I would go there. But if I click on materials, it's gonna take me to my materials page. Now, here is where if people ask for specific help and I make videos, I'll post things there. Unit B, and then some things are not visible for you. Well, I have most of it visible right now. This, wow, that's pretty cool folder. I feel like most of you probably haven't poked around this very much. There's some really sweet videos in here for you to check out. So there's math and engineering, a backwards bicycle where if you turn right, it steers left. This guy's really cool. The dude whose channel is smarter every day, he does a slow-mo video of how cats always land on their feet. So lots of great videos in there, but if I go back out to our materials page, oh, notice anytime you click on math, like Accelerate 7, you land on the updates page. So you gotta go back to materials. So if I wanna go to chapter six, I'm gonna go into unit B, but notice that when I enter unit B, there's a couple videos here that have to do with unit B. What is the difference between rational and irrational? Then how do I classify numbers? I reorder these so that what we are doing right now shows up on top. Chapter four and chapter five are still here. They're just down lower because we've already done them. But notice I have videos relating to the whole chapter. So if you are struggling just on the chapter in general, these videos can help you. But once I go into the chapter, guys, don't just be clicking through this so fast that you're not looking at anything. This walks through the process of how we get repeating decimals. This reminds us of our rules 
for how we convert a decimal back into a fraction. However many digits repeat, that's how many nines go on bottom. Four digits repeat, four nines go on bottom. When it terminates, run through the decimal place values, run through some other decimal equivalents, a giant table full of fraction decimal equivalents. Six three yesterday, dealing with percents greater than 100, walking through part and whole and our percent equation, how we solve different things, how we can cross multiply. Somebody came and asked me for help in extensions and they used this method. Today's lesson, percent values less than one, really, really small. So there's your reminder on things dealing with that. But if I want to look at 6.4, I go into the folder and there's my assignment. But pay attention that previous days, like say you were working on last night's homework and you're struggling. Now when I go into 6.3, our video from class is uploaded and living right here. So if you missed class or if you didn't pay attention to everything, that video is all right here, everything from class because we finished our mastery. Remember, so we did have a short class yesterday. It was only 27 minutes. So these folders are constantly changing. In the 6.4 folder, the video won't be up until after your class and after I have time to upload it. Kind of, we're gonna shift to more of a blended or a, like flipped model, which will kind of be like what you're asking about. The other way, Ozzy, can I show your grades? Do you care? The other way you can access your assignments real easy is if I'm on my home page and I click on this over on the left where it says grades attendance, that's then gonna ask me, well, what class do you wanna look at? Well, if I go to Accelerate 7, I can see all the practice grades there. All of these are good. And let's say Ozzy wants to jump right to 6.4. He can click on this and jump right to that assignment. Or if he wants to go back and look at 6.3. But I want to talk about your assignments for a second. Once you've done an assignment, you can view it. And I feel like some of you guys haven't realized this. So Ozzy's done with this assignment. He's got a good score. He's at an 86. But let's say he wants to go and see what he got wrong. You click view assessment. And you can see what you got wrong and analyze why did I get that wrong. The process, which process represents conversion from a percent to a decimal. So you said move the decimal two places to the left. We actually move the decimal to the right. No, you're asking us to do the percent that doesn't have to be done. Yeah, sorry. So we can also, uh, conversion from a percent to a decimal. Ah, here's your issue. It says add a percent sign. You can move the decimal two places left. But if we're converting into a decimal, we wouldn't add the percent sign, we would take it away. Yeah. Or, um, and this, the problem with that still is add a percent sign. So he could analyze, and what else did you miss? You probably missed another. 192 is 240% of what number? So we could set this up as a proportion. Some people had issues on this because somebody came and asked me about this yesterday. You can also set up that any percent is that out of how many? 100. And this is always part compared to whole. Is this the part or the whole? 192 is, the is is always the part, the of is the whole, and I don't know what the of is. So I could set up 192 over some value that I don't know. And if you know about cross multiplying, you can cross multiply to solve. The other option that we have here is setting up 192 is, mathematically is would be an equal sign, 240%. Well, I know to convert that to 2.4, gentlemen, of some number I don't know, and then I can see all I have to do to get this x by itself is divide by the 2.4. Anything else that we should point out about schooling? Feel pretty good on it? So we are going to start discussion boards. And there was one in chapter five, but it was completely optional. When I require discussion boards, and I don't think I'll start it for chapter six for you guys because we're already halfway done. I'll probably start in chapter seven. I'm gonna open up an optional discussion board for chapter six. But like in chapter five, I think I left it visible. I hope I left it visible. So there's this discussion board. And the chapter six one, I'm naming questions, comments, concerns. You can't see it yet. Um, but that's really, a lot of times I'm wondering, do you have questions? Evie, please put it away. Do you have comments about the material or do you have concerns about anything? 
concerns like when's the test, I don't know how to do this, I can't get this homework done, any of that stuff. So in this discussion board would be where you would write a comment, either a question that somebody else would hopefully answer, an answer to somebody else's question, or just something about the chapter. So you said, oh, I saw a percent when I was out shopping with my parents and I calculated da 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 It doesn't have to need a reply. You just have to participate in the online discussion. So does this all make sense, how to go to the discussion board? And you would just type just like any other online discussion base. And the chapter is? For chapter seven, we're going to start that you have to do it, yes. Ask a question or something. Yep, something. Either a question, a comment, a concern, something that relates to the, the chapter. Or if you like post a link, like, hey, here's a really cool website I found when I was looking for help, or you know, things like that. Yeah. Wait, so like, do we have to put like the reading, or is it just like? It'll be for the chapter. Is it just like one item for each chapter, or like, where's that count? You'll need at least one, but once you post, I, if I was you, I would check back because people might reply to you, or the discussion will continue on. So you should check back on like, where's the discussion going? But yeah, so for chapter seven, I'll tell you guys, and I, I might even give you class time. For chapter seven, you will need to post in the discussion board. Chapter six, you do not need to, but you'll just have to do it once for the chapter. Um, other thing you can look at, other members that are available, you can message people, uh, you can message me. So you have no messages, but if you come up here to messages, you can click new message and say like, oh, who do I want to message to? Well, let's message to Mr. Hudson. And either of these are, my accounts are merged. I don't know why, but just click on the one that has Timber's name. Yeah. So that's how you message. You can though, do all kinds of cool stuff in your messages. Like I could decide that I want to video message. And this might not work because I'm filming with my, um, this may or may not work. Hey, so then I could record my message and say, hey, so Mr. Hudson, I'm struggling on this problem right here. I have no idea how to solve that problem. Can you help me, please? And then you could send me that message. Are you going like, to share a screen? Huh? Are you you like cannot screen share, but you can just easily. Um, or oh, you mean, can you show your screen yes. in the recording? Um, I'm not totally certain. Yeah, I don't think you can screen share. At least not using this. This has to have a camera, so you have to have a webcam. Yeah, but if your webcam's in your computer, that wouldn't really work. But. Yeah, if you have a separate, you could. Or, guys, like I have the instructions for, you can just do a screen capture, like a picture of your screen, and you can send that. So, if this will actually cancel, So, if I want to do that, I could also do audio, audio, audio. I don't know if I can take a picture. Yeah, you'd have to save it as a file and then upload the file. So, guys, and this is being recorded, so if you get stuck, Here's how you would want to screen capture. And Andrew, your thing is annoying the crap out of me. Okay, so let's say I'm struggling. Let's jump right to 6.4. Nope, not the folder I wanted. By the way, sometimes navigating with the back button is better because it takes you back to exactly where you were on the page. <clears throat> Here's the process for screen capturing. Let's say Ozzy struggled on 6.1. He, great Ozzy, you only missed one problem. That's actually good, I'm just saying. Like, So let's say he wants to send me this and say, I don't know why I got this wrong. 
I have to hold down alt print screen because I have the multiple monitors, but all you would need to do is hit the button that says PRT SCR. And if you're on a Chromebook, it'll then pop up at the bottom of the corner and say like um, screen saved or something like that. And you have to click on it to do, can you stop talking at the same time as me? You have to click on it to save that picture. So you can't just like, so on mine, my picture is in my copy right now. I need to paste it. All right, so hopefully this doesn't stop. So now I would take the image that I just captured. I would drop it into here. I would save it as like, you know, 6.1 question, whatever it is, 14. I forget what question it is. And then I normally just save this to my desktop because then I'm going to delete this file after I send it. So I would save that, and then I can come over here, <coughs> open my message, and attach that file. So this little button right here is how you attach it. And by the way, okay, yeah, if you text me a picture, it goes to my email. You need to text me, then send me a picture. You text it in the, like, I never saw it till this morning because it went to my email. So I then grab what I just captured, 6.1, question 14, or whatever question it was, and obviously put some body in your message, but then you would just send it away. And I will see your screenshot and be able to help you. Any other questions? Zion, put the tape away. Wad it up, throw it away, quit acting like a child. Jeremy, uh, I know, I'm looking at him making poor choices and I forgot his name. Okay, anything else that you think we should cover with Schoology? Uh, I don't even know. We haven't really used that yet. I think it's a way to video conference with people. I don't know, but now I know that Ozzy's and um, Solomon's been approved. I might try to play with this with them. And you've got two notifications since we even started talking this morning. So CJ replied to a book recommendations and Colin and Cole. This is also how you can be like, hey, you're in class. You shouldn't like, you can also check on timestamps. This is how we know what you guys are doing and when you're doing it. Your entire life is timestamped. We know, I know, which are like, they're probably supposed to be doing it. But if I see that you did something at one in the morning, I might tell your parents, hey, just so you're aware, your kid's up at one in the morning. Like, it's great they're doing their homework, but you should be aware they're up at one in the morning. So, well, and that might not be late to your parents either. They might not care. All right, are we ready to move into a lesson? Yes, we are. Nah, but we're good enough. If you really want to go look at them, we can, but we should. No. Calm down. Yeah, I think we're good. No, but we should be good. Is anyone having big issues on the homework? Because I can pull up yesterday's notes, but we did most of it. I know, it's the same content. You're learning Math 7 content currently. I know you're not in that class, but that's the content you're learning. Three now. That gap will get bigger as the year goes. Uh, it should end up being chapters. Um, so we ended, I think, at the bog, right? Is what percent of 12? Yeah, guys, this, we would just multiply by 9 to this, and then, like, we don't need to finish this. If you want to discuss it, we can, but we need to move on to our new notes. So, you can find a pencil and get one out of the jar. To evaluate what a rational value is as a percent, you should first think about what it is as a decimal, and then move the decimal blank, blank to the blank. 
So a rational value like one half or two thirds or four fifths or eight ninths, any of those fractions, Solomon, you just come to start here. Is that one space? This one's better. Just three of them have walked away, so I can't do that. So let's say, let's say we have a rational value. Let's choose a rational value, one half. What is one half as a decimal? Huh? Five tenths. So to convert that to a percent, what am I going to do to that decimal? Andrew? Two places to the right. So likewise, if I'm converting back from percent to decimal, I do the opposite, two places to the left then. But now, we want to talk about values that would be equivalent to half a percent and point out some of the common misconceptions of values that are not. So we talk about half of a percent. This is a very small value. Because think about 1%. What's 1% really represent? Huh? One out of a hundred. So let's say I have 500 of something. Let's say Skittles. I have a math problem with Skittles. If you haven't seen it yet, say I have 500 Skittles. So Jeremiah, if I know that I have half a percent, approximately how many Skittles would that be? That would be out of 500 Skittles. That would be, what would 1% be? So remember, it's one one hundredth. So what's one one hundredth of five hundred? You can always pass if you want. I lost my cards. Did I set these down somewhere? Ah, aha. Are you passing? Five, right? So so one one hundredth. I like what you're thinking. So one percent. Is one one hundredth? Jeremiah just related. That'd be the same as five five hundredths. So one percent of five hundred would be five. So if we had half a percent, we'd only have two and a half, right? So when we're talking about half a percent, it's very, very, very small. Anytime we're talking about less than one percent, you gotta realize we're talking a tiny amount. So half a percent. I want to convert that back to a fraction and a decimal. So I want to first go to a decimal. So let's look at this in decimal percent form. Well, half is just 0.5, but it's still percent. Then I want to take this from percent to decimal form. Gravity works. How do I go from percent to decimal? The opposite of what we set up here. Ellie? Yeah, we take away the percent sign. We move it two places to the left. So guys, I'm going to get very small decimal values. And that is equivalent to what fraction? Well, we can look at what place value is it in. What place is the third decimal place? Thousandths. So it's five thousandths. Or two and a half five hundredths. I know that's not proper, but if you want to talk about those Skittles, don't write this fraction down. This is not proper since we put a decimal in it. But if we want to talk about those Skittles, there's our two and a half Skittles out of the five hundred. But if I reduce this properly, it's one two hundred. So half of a percent. If they say half a percent of all kids are born with this genetic defect. That would be one out of every 200. Which, when you talk about a genetic defect, you're like, oh, that's kind of nerve wracking. But if I told you half a percent of all people who enter the raffle will win, then you're like, mm, my odds aren't that bad. One out of every 200 people. If you look at Phoenix, we have approximately 200 people in Phoenix. If you take students and staff, we have about 200 people. So that'd be like one out of all of us. 
Because so so we set it up five thousands. Are you okay with how we got there? So then I reduce, I divide by five and divide by five. That's how I get one two hundred. Oh, so half of the cent is one two hundred. Yeah, so I convert to decimal, then I convert to fraction, then I reduce my fraction. Awesome. So you have one two hundred and twenty two thousand. Well, I, I just made that up. Well, so, oh, I guarantee some of you. I do. I have a, a genetic heart condition. But, like, so that it just happens. Some people have defects and go through their whole life and never know. I don't think that's a defect. A defect is when, like, something forms incorrectly. Like, my heart has something form incorrectly. So, by the way, are you related to a Julie? Okay, she'd be in her 20s. I have a friend who has the same last name as you that I used to uh, I don't think, uh, maybe, it's an abnormality. I don't think it'd be counted as a defect. So, here's dangerous things. Values not equivalent to half a percent. People make these mistakes every year. This is not the same. This is a half of what you have. This would be 50%. Also not equivalent is a half. Because that's still 50% of what you have. These are the misconceptions I see. And then people try to do this. Still not equivalent. You don't have enough zeros. You did not move your decimal far enough. Um, I'm trying to think of other misconceptions people have. But I think those are the main ones. These are not... Equal. Make sure that you point out on your paper that these are not equal values. We're trying to avoid those mistakes. Those are the mistakes that I see commonly. So I'm still adjusting where my mic actually sits to pick up well. So now we need to look at one fourth of one percent. So take a moment on your own on this got it. Which of these could be more than one of them are equivalent to one-fourth of one percent. All right, Anish, is 25% equal to our fourth percent? No, because this is one fourth of the set or of the total. This is one fourth of 1% of the total. So that is not. What about four hundredths, Jaslyn? What percent would this be? Four over a hundred? You want to pass it off, Whitney? Anytime we have something over a hundred, the numerator is your percent value. So this would actually be four percent and is not equal either. What about 0 0.25, Sean? What would it be? It would be what? Yeah, that's a fourth. So this 3 is actually the same as 1. These are the same values. And 4 is, in fact, your correct answer because you have to shift your decimal. Now, hey, guys, we have a lot of chatter. Let's knock it off.
Because I'm still debating your seating chart. I hate being the mean guy, but I'm pretty sure I need to break up the three of you. That's what you're communicating to me. So I don't like if I don't have to, I won't, but show me that I hopefully don't have to. You should always, when they give you your percent as a fraction, think about the decimal percent form before you go anywhere else. Because once you see this, and you think about moving that decimal two places, you can recognize I have that zero and another zero. That's how I get these two zeros right there. Awesome. Say that again? I, I didn't catch your question. One fourth of a percent okay. is zero point two five percent. How do you think one fourth of a percent is divisible? Percent sign versus no percent sign. So this, 0 0.25, we know 25 hundredths is a fourth. We know that like these are equivalent, but this is not a percent. This is a percent. So this is a fourth of the, the group. Like if we had a pizza, it'd be this section. But this fourth of a percent would be like take 1%, one percent, one one hundredth of the pizza, and then take a fourth of it. Oh, so it's a fraction of a percent, then it would be it's a fraction of one percent. Uh huh. Of both. Yep. Okay. So if you had one eighth with a percent sign, it'd be take your one percent and take an eighth of the percent, like of the one percent. Oh, and I do one. Yeah. Any yeah. other questions? Please ask them. Hungry. That's how I would feel. So, I want you to show why these are not equal, and I would prefer that you show one third of a percent what that equates to, and 33.3 repeating percent what that equates to. Why are these not equal? All right, Jeremiah, what did you do to your one third fraction percent? I Yeah. I agree, but I don't like going from decimal back to fraction. So I'm going to leave this. Keep working up here at the top. What does this then become decimal form? If I go all the way to decimal, not decimal percent form, but all the way to decimal form. Mm -hmm. You just said this is 0 0.3 repeating percent. So if I take the percent sign off, what would this become? Remember, any percent is that value over 100. So if I divide a decimal value by 100, what does that do to the decimal? Julian? Yeah, it shifts it. Be careful using the word add because that's actually a math word. It shifts my decimal to the left twice, and this becomes 0 0.003 repeating forever. This value, when I do the division by 100 to convert it, just becomes 0 0.33 forever. These are not equal. So sorry, these are arrows. This is a not equal symbol. These okay. two values are not, sorry, this should not be percent. Oh. Yeah, it's my error. 
You always want to look at them in a common format. So I could have just converted this to decimal percent form and compared my decimal percent forms, or I go all the way to straight decimal form, no percent involved, and I compare it just decimal form. By the way, the data that I cite on your homework is real, except for the Skittles thing. I do not actually hate Billy Skittles. I don't like them, but I don't hate them. Ah. Uh, well, I'm gonna try to pass this. I it moved, and I didn't like where it came out. All right, so here's how we can try to visualize, and this is like what Manasa and I were just talking about, really small percentages. If we had 100%, so here's our whole 100%. So this set that we're talking about now is 200. We have 200 objects. But what we want to talk about is what is 75 hundredths of a percent. Can you throw the rice piece on? So then, if I convert that percent value to a decimal, I get 75 ten thousandths. But really, if we take this section of my set, of my 200, and I look at only 25% of it. So let's look at this section right here. 25% of it would be 50 people, or whatever things, what do we want to be talking about? Bananas? Let's say bananas. I had a banana this morning. So if we had 200 bananas, a fourth of the set would be 50. But we need to look way smaller than that. We see that 75 hundredths of a percent is 1.5. So right? how much does it take to So the easy way Manus is trying to describe to us is to find 1%, you just shift your decimal over. You really just divide by 100 to find your 1%. So 1% is 2. What would this decimal value be as a fraction? Uh, three, uh, three fourths. Three fourths, right? So this is three fourths of my 1%. So it's my yeah, so we can just take my 2 times three-fourths, and we get one and a half. So if that confuses you, forget that it ever happened. Men in black, just wipe it, it's gone. But if that makes sense to you, we can calculate 1% first and then use it as a reference. Because then I can really just take that times whatever this decimal is, or fraction if I convert it. So try these next three using one of the methods that we've talked about. So you could either find what is 1% and then manipulate that, or you could find the decimal value and multiply your total with that. Here we have a part and a whole. So I, so I want to walk through one of these with you. I just realized that. Um, the hardest ones here probably are where you're looking for the whole, where you're trying to find what is the total amount of the set. So this question, the third one here, says four is half of a percent of some value. When we convert this to a mathematical statement or mathematical sentence, we would write four is I want to convert my percent to a decimal value, so I have to move this decimal two to the left or divide by 100, and I get 0 0.005, or five thousandths, times some number that I don't know. We might as well call it W for the whole. I would write this work down if I was you, because this is the important stuff that you have to go. We haven't done much with equation solving yet. 
we're going to in unit one, and then we'll get really deep into it in unit three, or unit A, and then unit C, if you want to call it like that. Whole. Because there's a part amount and a whole amount. And we're looking for the whole. Hang on, let me finish this way. Yeah, so I got you. Since this is multiplied, to get W by itself, we just undo whatever's keeping them together. We essentially divorce the number. Well, what's holding them together is the multiplication. How do you undo multiplication? Division. So divide by the number you want to get rid of. Are you going to show your cross multiplication method? No? When you divide by a number smaller than one, magic happens. Because if I had a pizza to give to an eighth of a person, a whole person, I get more than a pizza. So when you divide by very small numbers, your answer gets bigger. And we get 800. So the whole value here is 800. So you, you must have forgotten to move your decimal. Jeremiah, check this number right here and these. You're using the wrong value, or you typed it in wrong, or you did the math wrong. You either have a wrong number or you did the math wrong. So these notes we will pick up and finish tomorrow. So don't feel like you have to do 6-4. If you want to try it, awesome. Monas, can you hang on to that thought till tomorrow? Just because we're out of time. Okay, so check it and see if your method works. So give the homework a shot. Bring questions to class. I'll probably extend the due date an extra day. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day.